in the vast expanse of our solar system, among swirling gas joints and rocky Earth-like planets, an intriguing world lurks. A world larger than the planet Mercury, but orbiting not around the Sun, but around the closer planet Jupiter. This is Ganymede, the largest satellite in our solar system. Ganymede, covered in a thick icy shell, has attracted scientists for years. Its battered and scarred surface tells a story that's been billions of years in the making. A story we were only beginning to unravel. Beneath its icy exterior, Ganymede hides secrets that could forever change our view of life in the universe. It is currently the only known moon that has its own magnetic field. Deep beneath its surface, there may be more water than all of Earth's ocean combined. Today, we take a trip to this distant moon. We'll study its recent images and delve into the mysteries these images have begun to reveal. You are watching Luminary Cosmos. Make sure to watch this video till the end and do not forget to subscribe. Our story began more than four centuries ago in 1610, when a man named Galileo Galilei pointed his primitive telescope at the night sky. He discovered four points of light orbiting the giant planet Jupiter. These were Galileo's satellites, and the largest among them was Ganymede. Galileo's observations of these Galilean moons revolutionized our understanding of the cosmos. They provided the first evidence that not all celestial bodies revolve around the Earth. Ganymede is the titan among the satellites, with a diameter of about 3,273 miles. It is the largest moon in our solar system, surpassing even the planet Mercury in size. Fast forward to the present day, our ability to study Ganymede has kept pace with technological advances. Modern telescopes, both ground-based and space-based, have given us a clearer picture of the distant moon. But it was the advent of space probes that ensured in an era of exploration. Spacecraft such as the Galileo Orbiter and the Juno probe have traveled to the Jupiter system to send back to Earth detail. Spacecraft such as the Galileo Orbiter and the Juno probe have traveled to the Jupiter system to send back to Earth detail images and data that have allowed us to study Ganymede like never before. These missions have given us a close-up view of Ganymede's surface, revealing its icy terrain and intriguing patterns etched on it. Ganymede is a moon of contrast. Its surface is a patchwork of two different types of terrain. Darker areas filled with craters and grooves tell of the moon's turbulent past, while lighter areas hint at a dynamic and geological active world. An equally tantalizing aspect of Ganymede lies beneath its icy surface. Scientists believe there is a vast ocean of liquid water beneath the ice, containing more water than all of Earth's ocean combined. Ganymede's magnetic field, which is a unique among moons, is another intriguing feature. It's usually a trade reserve for planets, but Ganymede generates its own magnetic field. This field creates beautifully auroras in Ganymede's rarefied atmosphere, a sight truly worth seeing. The question arises, could this distant icy world harbor the conditions necessary for life? Our understanding of Ganymede has been greatly enhanced by the daring missions sent to the Jupiter system. One of the most significant of these was the Galileo mission, launched by NASA in 1899. Sorry, 1989. Galileo arrived at Jupiter in 1995, embarking on a nearly 80-year mission to study the gas giant and its satellites. The spacecraft made several close flybys of Ganymede, taking detailed pictures of its icy surface and mirroring its magnetic field. The data collected by Galileo revolutionized our understanding of Ganymede revealing its complex geological history and confirming its magnetic field. This feature distinguishes not only from other satellites but also from most planets. Ganymede is the only satellite in our solar system that generates its own magnetic field. The magnetic field is created by the movement of molten iron in the core of the celestial body, a process similar to that which generates the Earth's magnetic field. However, the main mystery is that, judging by the structure of the satellite 
and its age. The core of Ganymede should have cooled and solidified long ago. So how does the moon create a magnetic field? Answer may lie in a process called tidal heating. As Ganymede orbits Jupiter, the planet's gravitational pull causes the moon's interior to contract and stretch. This process creates friction within Ganymede, generating heat. This heat could be enough to melt part of Ganymede's interior, creating a layer of liquid metal that generates the moon's magnetic field, among other things. Ganymede's magnetic field is a unique in that, unlike Earth's, it's embedded in Jupiter's powerful magnetosphere, creating a complex and dynamic electromagnetic environment. This magnetic field is important for the potential habitability of Ganymede, as it could protect the moon from harmful solar radiation. In addition, the interaction between Ganymede's magnetic field and Jupiter's magnetosphere reduces auroras in Ganymede's thin atmosphere. These auroras have provided scientists with valuable information about the internal structure of Ganymede, for example, confirming the presence of an ocean beneath its surface. More recently, the Juno spacecraft has been trying to study Jupiter and its satellites. Launched in 2011, Juno's primary mission is to study Jupiter's composition, its gravitational field, magnetic field, and polar magnetosphere. In June 2001, NASA's Juno spacecraft made a close flyby of Ganymede, coming within 645 miles of the Moon's surface and taking the most detailed images of the Moon's surface to date. The Juno Cam imaging system had only 25 minutes to capture images of Ganymede, but it managed to take five stunning exposures. These images show Ganymede's complex and clean surface with a mix of darker areas filled with craters and lighter areas with grooves and patterns. The Juno science team is now comparing these images with those from previous missions, looking for any changes that may have occurred over the past decades, sorry, past two decades. These images are not only visually stunning but also key to understanding Ganymede's geology and the potential for life. For example, the images show light and dark areas on Ganymede's icy shell, indicating differences in the purity and composition of the ice. The dark regions are considered the oldest parts of Ganymede's surface. They are heavily cratered, indicating they have been relatively stable for a long period, bearing the scars of countless impacts. In contrast, the lighter colored groove regions are younger and indicate more recent geological activity. These regions are modeled with intricate patterns of ridges and ditches, some of them more than a mile high and hundreds of miles long. These forward landforms are thought to have formed as a result of tectonic activity caused by tidal heating from Ganymede's elliptical orbit around. So viewers, that's all for today's video. I hope you have enjoyed the video. If you did, then tap the like button and do not forget to subscribe Luminary Cosmos. There is plenty more to come. So see you in another day in another episode. Till that, take care, love you, goodbye.